united with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors, serving throughout the Border Valley community and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation of Life Christian Broadcasting Television. And now, United with Christ. Today we are going to continue in the book of Genesis. Uh, we'll start with part two. And part two is about the creation versus evolution. We would like to, to continue the discussion on the debate of evolution versus creation. Uh, we all have a curiosity. We would like to know what does the Bible say about how everything got started. Uh, the Bible allows us to test theories so that we can understand what is going on to make sure that what we believe is uh, what, what we believe is acceptable. In Romans chapter 12, verse 2, to start here, uh, the Bible says, Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. God gave us will, intellect, and emotion, but sometimes people forget about the part of the mind. So he says, Transform by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good, acceptable, and perfect. So our curiosity, the test theories, we want to look at the evolutionary model. So in the slide here where it says evolutionary theory and the evolutionary model, we want to investigate what it is talking about. And just to remind you, uh, I have a, a double major in college, was English and earth science. So in all my scientific classes on earth science, we studied the evolutionary model. And I wanted to know exactly what it was talking about. Now what is the issue? If you look at the next slide, you have two evolutionary models the microevolution versus the macroevolution. Micro, of course, means small. Macro means large. So in macroevolution, it's, it's talking about the variety within species. No one is arguing about that there's variety within, in species. There, there is such a thing as macroevolution. That's not the issue. That's not the one people are talking about. It's macroevolution, large evolution. This is where species change into new species that's the argument that's the issue that we will discuss now in charles darwin began all of this and he lived 1809 to 1888 and he said the fossil record would prove his theory if you just looked at the fossil uh there would be part one animal in that same fossil another part of another animal, the two animals got together and they in turn created a new species. So that was what we have to investigate. In the next slide there is a, a drawing, it's not actual pictures, Darwin's uh, 1859 theory from monkey to man. It's just a drawing uh, and so just look at it that way. Now there was a big controversy as time went on called the Piltdown Man and this is about the missing link. This is the link between uh, apes, monkeys, to humans. That's the missing link. And you want to find in the fossil record part monkey and a part human to make sure that this thing would be correct. Well, they discovered that this was a hoax. It was a hoax in science. Exactly what was the issue? The missing link was a skull and jaw fragments actually from a human and an ape, probably an orangutan, scratches on the surface of the teeth visibly under the microscope, revealed that the teeth had been filed down to make them look human, but they were not. So they discovered that it was false. Now, what is exactly the evolutionary model about life? So the evolutionists say that millions and millions of years ago, there was a pond, and inside the pond, there was accumulation of amino acid. Some place in the pond, all of those amino acid got there, and then what happened? Well, amino acid are biologically important organic compounds composed to sustain life. You have to have amino acids. In the form of proteins, amino acids comprise the second largest compound, water is the largest, of human muscles, cells, and other tissues. So this amino acid got it in the pond here. Now, what they're saying is this, that here's a DNA, and something happened to this amino acid. 
Now, in the next slide, what happened? They say the evolutionary model says that lightning struck the amino acid in that concentrated form, and when lightning hit that, it created life. It created a one-cell creature, and this one-cell creature is the basic creature, they say, that has formed all animals on the earth. Consider all the animals of a zoo. All of them would have come from this one single cell. Now, we are, we have will, intellect, and emotion, and our intellect wants to know some more detail about it. So to make the hypothesis true, you, what you have to do is you have to be there and observe what happened. Since this is a creation of life, who was there? Nobody was there. So the second thing you would have to do to change it from theory to fact would be able to duplicate it. So what they did is they built a chamber. And in this chamber, they put water, amino acids, sand, vegetation. Uh, and then they got a large a pole hooked to electrical line. And they hit this uh, accumulation of things trying to create life. Now, on the slide there, you'll see Stanley Miller Harayui from the University of Chicago. He performed a recreation of life experiment in 1953. So if you look at the picture on the left, the bottom electrical discharge apparatus hit all this accumulation of vegetation, water, sand, etc. And he, he tried to duplicate creating life, but instead no life was created at all. Therefore, it can stays in the theory of a theory and not facts. A human cell uh, is, is on the next slide different components of that. Now, what they're saying is this. A single cell from this lightning it, it, it developed and it divided and divided and divided. Single cell division. So it's in water, so a fish would be the logical thing that would be next. So cells uh, or fish cells that are there, you can see some of the fish cells. The fish formed uh, from these fish cells. So single cell, dividing, 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 and dividing, and eventually you have a creature called fish. And this is from these fish cells. Now, here's the theory if you look at there. A single cell created all life on the earth from fish, amphibians, reptiles, monkeys, and man. Now, if you look at the picture where the trunk of the tree is, you'll see macro Evolution. That means large species, not variations within species, but from one species going to another species. All the animals from the zoo came from this one single cell, they say, that was hit by lightning millions and millions of years ago. Now, what's the process that they talk about, that they argue about? The process was through mutations. So on the left side, you see a before DNA. On the right side, you see a mutated a DNA now, DNA is made out of amino acid, and it has little segments in it. A human has one million uh, little segments. Somehow, a mutation occurred. So let's look at one of the examples. Species evolve into new species. So you're looking for a fossil that would have, say, part rabbit and part antelope. So today, somebody, as a joke, more or less, uh, they created this jackalope. It's part a rabbit and part antelope. And you'll see the sign at the upper uh, part of the slide there, a jackalope crossing. And then below it, a rabbit with, antel uh, with uh, antlers. Now, remember they're saying two things got together, created a new species, and the fossil record is telling us about that. Now, I guess the most famous one be mutant teenage ninja turtles. Mutations from new species would create these turtles. Of course, you and I know it's just cartoon, but it's the idea that humans and turtles somehow got together and a mutation occurred, and now you have part humans and part turtles. The teenage mutant ninja turtles. Two different species, they mate, and they form a new animal, like a cat and a fish. So you have a catfish. Now, uh, there's one way to, to remember this. Uh, I hope it doesn't bother you on my illustration, but imagine 
a farmer goes out to the barn and he is romantically in love with his cow. Love uh, develops, so he gets together with the cow. The question is, what's produced from a human and a cow? So the answer is a cow boy, part cow and part boy. So a farmer and a cow. So you'd have to have a species with one animal mixed with the other animal that created a, a new species. That's what the argument is about. Now, Big Bird, the DNA makeup changed. So you'll see on the left side a small dinosaur, then one with feathers, then Big Bird. And so they're saying uh, that something like a Big Bird existed through the mutational changes uh, in the DNA. Successive generations of dinosaurs, now, uh, they jumped off a cliff and wings developed. Let me tell you uh, uh, what happened in one of my classes. In my dinosaur class, the professor was telling us about dinosaurs, and he used the podium as an illustration. So he told us that a dinosaur jumped off a cliff, hit the bottom of the ground, and he flattened out. It was so far down. He got up. He made it with Mrs. Dinosaur. They had Dinosaur Junior, and Dinosaur Junior got up on the cliff, and he was flatter than Senior, so that he jumped off, and when he hit the bottom, he flattened out also. So Dinosaur Senior was flattened, but Dinosaur Junior was, was much more flattened. Dinosaur the Third got up and jumped off, and he is a lot skinnier than, jun than Senior and Junior. So as time went on, he said the last dinosaur developed appendages, feathers developed, and it flew away. Well, I was new to a dinosaur class, so I thought he was telling us a joke, and I laughed. He looked at me, and uh, I went, uh-oh, I'm in trouble. So I raised my hand and said, sir, would you please repeat that? And so he repeated that, and I said, thank you, I appreciate that. So they're saying that the DNA from a dinosaur that hit the bottom of a cliff it changed the DNA, and then now the dinosaur would be flatter. So let us take this idea in mind. Let's pretend that you uh, have a friend who was driving near uh, a railroad track, and so he was driving real wild, crazy, and he hit something, and he got thrown out of the car, and he landed on the railroad track. His arm is on the track. A train engine comes by and severs his arm. He doesn't have a right arm anymore. He falls in love, and love develops, and they have baby number one. Baby number one is missing his right arm because somehow, magically, the DNA changed. Does that really happen? No. So if you have this big scar on your head, you'll say, well, my great uncle, he got hit by Indian, and the DNA changed him, which in turn changed my parents and changed me, and I have a scar from an Indian. It does not make sense. The DNA is not changed just because somebody falls off a cliff, has a baby, or, or someone falls on a railroad track and the arm is missing and their baby has no arm. There's a teacher in the school system that when she was in the fourth grade, somebody threw a pencil at her, hit her eyeball, it blinded her on her right eye. Her first daughter was born with a missing right eye. True or false? It would be false. So the daughter had a regular, normal eye. The DNA was not changed in the mother from the pencil at, at all. Now, the, the fossil record is what Darwin said would prove that his theory is a fact. So if you look at this, the University of Edinburgh in Scotland has a collection of 60,000 fossils. They have collected them from all over the earth all over the place. No fossils with different animal components were found within any species. None of the fossils had part this animal or part that animal. They did not exist. All these fossils came from all over the earth. Now let's take the Precambrian trilobite. Now there are stages from Precambrian at the bottom and Cambrian going all the way up to modern time. And if you see the picture there, you see a 521 million years old trilobite. Now, it's a Precambrian, which is at the beginning uh, of the start of animals. 
So they died out. There should not be any, any more uh, trilobites. They kind of would remind us of like a cockroach or something, something like a small little uh, species. So it died out. Now, in the next slide, you'll see the trilobites and human footprints. They looked at the human footprints in, in a fossil in the Precambrian period versus the modern period. And you're not going to believe it. But in the fossil, see at the, on the right-hand side in the middle, there's a trilobite. The trilobites should have gone out way before humans entered the picture of life at all. So there's a confusion. How could the trilobite still exist? It should not exist. So this is a huge time variation, and it does not quite make sense with uh, uh, the creationists, but the evolutionists, they go for it. In the next slide, when I was in my class, we went to a huge strat of rock, just an enormous amount of rock. So I got out of the bus, walked down, and I was looking at the rock. My professor, he came down and next to me, and I said to him, Sir, how old are these rocks? And he said, they're one million years old. And I went, ooh, I better not touch it. I might break them. So I said, how do you know? that they are one million years old. He said, because I said so. And I went, oh, okay. Uh, do you have any reason? He said, carbon-14 testing proves that these rocks are one million years old. So I said, thank you. I got on the bus, opened up my geology book, turned in the back, looked up carbon-14 testing, and it said the maximum amount of time was 2,400 years, not a million not a million at all, just 2,400 years. So I decided not to go show him because I might not uh, pass the class. So I just said, wait, there's something not right. Carbon-14 doesn't date past 2,400 uh, 2400 years. Now today, there is this doubt about Darwin's theory. And so someone wrote a book called Darwin's Doubt. Now in this uh, book, the people who read it, they decided they would do something. So a scientific descent from Darwinism occurred. Now look at this real close. 514 petition signers, including 154 biologists, the largest single scientific discipline represented on the list, as well as 76 chemists and 63 physicists. Signers hold doctorates in biology, physics, chemistry, mathematics, medicine, computer science, and related disciplines. So they signed this petition, these professors. Many are professors from research at major universities, university institutions such as MIT, Smithsonian, Cambridge University, UCLA, UC Berkeley, University of Pennsylvania, Princeton, Ohio State University, Stanford, University of Georgia, University of Washington, and Yale. All of these famous colleges, all these universities, uh, 514 signed that they disagree with the evolutionary model. They doubt Darwin and his theories. So there is this idea of looking at the evidence from a different point of view. So today, it is called the uh, intelligent design theory. Okay, and in the intelligent design theory, uh, it says there's some kind of intelligent. A God loves science. He loves science. God loves science. He created everything. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He should know everything about it. Now, look what it says in Psalm 19.1 at the bottom there. The heavens declare the glory of God. The sky displays his handiwork. God is proud of his creation of what he did, of how he worked everything out. In the next slide, but from the beginning of creation, God made the male and female. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. He knows all about his creation. Before you were born, I set you apart. The Lord knows everything that is there. Now, let us make man in our image is in Genesis 1, 26. How, how can it say us? How, how can it be us in our image well, as you read the Bible, you discover that there's one God, but there's three parts, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So he is talking about, let us make man in our image. Well, what does that mean? 
created man in his own image, the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So what he's talking about, we don't look like God. We're not created in that kind of image. What he's talking about is God has will, intellect, and emotion. And he gave us, humans, will, intellect, and emotion as what he has. And the next slide, and let the earth bring forth living creatures after their kind, cattle, creeping things, beasts of the earth after their kind. Now, last time we talked about after their kind. So cattle, domestic creatures, creeping things, wild beasts, all created the exact species that they were into the next species, which what they were. So a lady did not have a baby, and the baby was a kangaroo or some, something like that. God made the beasts of the earth after their kind, the cattle after their kind, everything that creeps on the ground after its kind. God saw that it was good. So all species reproduce themselves, not into a new species. Let us make man in our image. Um, you'll see the, the, the word, uh, the English word for, for that, tislim. And that means likeness with will, intellect, and emotion. So we are created in that image of will, intellect, and emotion. Uh, the Lord designed us, he made us, and he says that he is not slow in keeping his promise. As some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. So in his creation, he gave us free will. And he is saying in the free will, we have the choice to come to him if we want to. It is our choice. Now, on the next slide, the Lord goes after our thinking. For who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? So God says, will, intellect, and emotion. And we as Christians and believers need to use our intellect a little bit more than we have been. So if you look at the next slide, Titus, the Roman legion, uh, is talking about Jesus weeping. And so he beheld the city. He knew in 70 it was going to be uh, destroyed. Now, the next slide, God oversees his earth. God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. So whatever species they are, the animals, humans, they, could, they make the same species that they are. Fill the earth and uh, subdue it. Now, vegetables, we talked about again uh, last time. Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the surface of all the earth, every tree which is, has fruit yielding seed in it. So whatever the seed is, it produces that a fruit or species. Now the question is, how are we allowed to uh, eat uh, meat? Uh, and to every beast and, and earth, to every bird of the sky, everything that moves on the earth which has life, I have given every green plant for food, and it was so. And God saw that all they had made, and behold, it was very good. There was evening and morning. So Tyrannosaurus rex, all the dinosaurs, every creatures and everything ate veggies. But when Adam and Eve sinned, things changed. So God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth. The fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every wild beast on the earth and every bird of the heavens, upon everything that creeps on the ground and all the fish of the sea. Now, here's what he says. It's okay to have a hamburger. Into your hand the animals are delivered. Every moving thing that lives shall be food for you. So it changes from a veggie to over to, uh, you can eat an animal, cow, hamburger, so forth. As I have given it to you, like I gave you the green plants, I give it to you. Now, the Bible says that we can kind of know who he is. So this is an amazing verse, Romans 1, 19. Since what has been known about God is evidence within them, for God has made it evident to them. So when you invite the Holy Spirit into your heart, you have that evidence, that feeling inside you. Now, the next picture is a famous picture of all creation uh, and everything uh, that is there. And the next slide, God revealed himself in nature. 
For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power, divine nature, have clearly been seen, being understood from what they have been made, so that people are without excuse. God say, I designed everything, I created everything, and if you want to make contact with me, you can see the stars, the earth, and everything, and it will give you a glimpse about the Creator. So, what are we talking about? Genesis chapter 1 talks about the creation, that God created everything in, what, six days, and in the animals, he made them after their kinds, all the species after their kind, humans after their kind, all that is there when we go out and we look at it, it says, since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, once again, his eternal power, divine nature, have been clearly seen. So when you look at the sunset, you go, wow, look what God made. Or do you look at the sunset and so, say, boy, it's sure blinding my eyes. A person who has this want to, to want to get to know God, he sees that and he says, I want to know who made the sun, the universe, and everything. That's the first step and getting to know who the Lord is. The second step would delve into his Bible and get it, get it more clear of who the Lord is. So, so that people are without excuse at the end is what he's talking about. You and I have decisions to make. So let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you have your book and we have been curious about how you designed things, how you made everything. But in Genesis, you tell us in the detail of how it works and how you did it. Lord, we want to get to know you. You are our designer. You are our creator. And you came out of heaven and you came to the earth so that we could have fellowship with you. You loved us so much, each and every one of us, that you want a relationship with us. And how do you get this relationship? All you have to do is bow your heart Bow your ego to him and say, Lord, come into my heart. Come into my heart and make me the person that you designed me to be, that you created me to be. I want to get to know my creator. You know more about me than I know about me. Jesus, come into my heart. Let's have a relationship together. Now, if you said something similar to that, then the Lord has come into your heart and he is your Lord. He has agreed to protect you guide you and direct you lord we thank you that you love us and you care for us in jesus name we all pray amen